I don't go for dinners, I don't go for movies. I went for two movies in the last two years. I'm consumed by the thought of just the film that I want to make. Whenever I enter an empty floor, I, it's, it's goose bumps and goose flesh for me. I was shooting this bathtub song and I didn't know what to do. I went over there and I said, Jim Morrison and Zina Tama. Mix the two and in no, the tub. In the tub. that was your brief. Yeah. How do you create something as bathroom. magical as Lalish in, under the sh in the bathroom? The bathroom. No, you're standing in the bathroom and Lalish comes to you. And I sing the song. I've loved you as a human being, not as a critic, because you've mostly not liked my films and given it harsh reviews, but I really love you as not a person. Harsh. Are we done? Sanjay, welcome to FC Director's Cut. It's taken me 10 months to get you to say yes to this interview. Yes, I'm quite amazed by your relentless pursuit and and I am a little upset about having finally relented because I find that there's no need for me to talk and do interviews. But I've loved you as a human being, not as a critic, because you've mostly not liked my films and given it harsh reviews. But I really love you as not a person. Harsh. Not harsh, Sanjay. Um, we will sit back after the interview and revisit those and discuss reviews the reviews. and discuss them in detail and Correct. say. But um, yes, I am happy that I'm finally sitting here and talking to you. It's my first. Um, interview after two years. So. Really? Thank you. Thank you for saying yes. Yes, dear. Anything for you. Tell me, Sanjay, why are you so elusive? You know, Padmavat, it's almost a year to the date. Uh, last January, it released, became a blockbuster. And after that, you just disappeared. So what have you been doing since then? Nothing. Um, getting over the trauma that I went yeah. through. It, it was, was a tough one. It was really, really. I think no filmmaker in the world, no filmmaker in the world, has gone through it yeah. or should ever go through it. Because what I went through was was not acceptable, was not uh, civil, was not uh, right in any way uh, for a filmmaker to invest in something that is so ambitious in his mind and to be able to do some film that is so difficult as Padmavat and then to make it through morchas that are happening outside the studio or when you're leaving the house, there are protest marches outside your house or in the evening when you're sitting and editing in the office, there are uh, women mochas of 300, 400 people, relentless assault on your mind, on your entire nervous system. But obviously I was very relentless myself. I just went and made the film my way, the way I wanted to. I did not allow any of these uh, problems uh, ever show on the screen, guarded it outside the studio gate and went in and then forgot about it. It takes a lot out of you to be able to uh, put up a shot which is uh, so beautiful, which I think is so beautiful and then you realize that there are people shouting outside and how will we go home and how will my unit go home. It's not forgot, forget about me, it's about my people who are working with me. To be able to shoot a film with 52 cops surrounding you through Film City, through the three months or to be physically attacked, uh, uh, these are all things that uh, and to the extent that I didn't know if the film would release because it had reached some outrageous proportions, the, the whole protest, which was pointless, which was uh, uncalled for. And the stress that if the film was not going to release, I yeah, mean, all these do? things, finally, then after so much of hoopla and after so much of talk about the film, then how are people going to react to it? And so all that took its toll and you wanted to, re I wanted to recover, um, forget about it, put it in the past. It's difficult because what you experience, your mind computes, it puts it into the, uh, into the mind, it's there in the system. But then you have to uh, eventually get over it. And I've gone through problems all through my yeah. career. But yeah. this one was, I think, uh, I couldn't even imagine that it could have happened uh, in the first place. So Do you feel I've healed? Been, uh, absolutely. Yeah. Healed primarily, I think, that with the minute the people responded to the film and said, but there was nothing to protest about. Exactly. And yeah. When it did that kind of box office numbers, 550 worldwide, it was the biggest overseas or whatever. I mean, that kind of love for the film, it just kind of calms you down because uh, you feel humbled also because uh, uh, you care for your work so much. It's, it's something that you've created out of your entire being. Um, and I've lived with Padmavat ever since I've done the Padmavati, the opera in 2008. So something that I've lived for and nurtured in my mind and made it happen eventually, manifested what I had imagined. I felt very good in some ways. Uh, healed, yes, uh, a slight 
uh, still a reservation about wanting to go out and meet people or talk to people or reach out to people because I, I went completely quiet because that was the only way to fight it. Mm -hmm. Let my work speak. Let me not get up and give explanations of what I can do, what I should do, what I should uh, take their approval from people besides the censor board, uh, not necessary. So I have kind of um, uh, silence and being quiet. Uh, became a part of me for this last one year, in, within which I was obviously thinking and writing and creating what I had to do and uh, so that I can start in this year what I have to, the next film that I want to make. But yes, it changed my perspective. It has scarred me. It has um, uh, changed my uh, perspective in of what way? people. In a lot of ways. And how much to trust people, how much to get up and believe in the freedom of expression, how much to believe in whether you have to take approval from 20,000 people and you're at completely um, at the mercy of people who finally can get up and just anybody can get up and say anything. It's a very scary thought. Uh, I was almost short of being lynched. So at the end of it, you wonder uh, uh, that these scars are not going to eventually just uh, disappear or vanish. But I'm not letting them uh, bog me down or bother me, but I'm in a very good space. I'm in a very calm, meditative, humbled space. Uh, it was also a lesson in to, to, keep your, to keep you on the ground and to keep you rooted because a film like that, if it had done very well and if I didn't have problems, maybe it would have gone to my mind, I don't know. <laughs> because I love that film and it's, it's one of my best works. So yeah, so this one year has been quite introspective, quite uh, assessing my flaws or looking in deep into what I want to now say after 25 years of making films. Uh, 94 when Vinod Chopra, when I did the songs for 1942, A Love Story. From there to now, it's a long time yeah. and gone through failures right in Kamoshi or Savaria, which were colossal flops, to Padmavat, which being the biggest hit. But I've seen all. Yeah. I've seen failure, I've seen love, I've seen hate, I've seen people attack my work and love my work and all sorts of sure. things. I felt um, sometimes jealous of filmmakers who've made very good films and I loved some of them also. So I'm a complete human being in that sense who's seen failure, success, love, hate. Um, I've experienced anger, jealousy, everything. So it's a, it's a wonderful space to be as a human being to understand all emotions which help you as a filmmaker to yeah. eventually for different characters to be able to portray it on screen. So yeah, it's a year of turmoil slowly, 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 slowly going. It's easy for people to say, but why don't you just snap out of it? Yeah. It's not something that you can snap out of. Sure. I don't think any of us can even imagine yeah. what that space must have yeah. been like. So let's get the rumors out of the way. Are you making a film with Shah Rukh and Salman? You yourself are saying rumors. I mean, no, if you're saying rumors, then why are you asking? No, but I'm saying like you have to, <laughs> you have to say rumor. yes or no. These are rumors. Haan, so I don't need to sit and uh, answer rumors and, and justify them or whatever. But I feel like you are. You're just sidestepping it and you don't lie very I well, so you're smiling also. I don't have to also. accept all your feelings and all that you feel about my film or my future <laughs> projects or all about your feelings. It's about my feeling, it's about uh, what I want to do. No, I have not yet uh, completely zeroed in on the film that I want to make from the three subjects that are very dear to me right now. So there's three that you're choosing from? That I'm choosing from, so... And can you tell us anything about any of that? Our next interview. <laughs> Which not will now. be 10 months, months from now. Ten months from now, after ten months that of you pursued. <laughs> okay, so Sanjay, here's what I was thinking about as I sort of, you know, considered all the films you made. That even when the films are based in contemporary times, you know, like Kamoshi the Musical or Ram Leela, they're very much set in a Sanjay Leela Bansali world, right? Of course you decide what the characters do, but the way they speak, the way they dress, they're not connected with a reality that is outside this office. So I have to ask, Sanjay, do you have a God complex? You know how Guy Tonde says in Sacred Games, Kabi Kabi Lagta Hai, Aponi Bhagwan Hai? Not at all. It's just that I create my own world. Every filmmaker has his own world. Right. Raj Kapoor had his own world. Satyajit Ray has his own world. V. Shantanam had his own world. They are the characters. That's a filmmaker's state of mind and his own personality and his understanding and perspective of life and how characters should behave, how they should look. Mm -hmm. I look different from most of the people that I, I understand in, in, within the industry or directors because I'm who I am. Yeah. They are who they are. So, uh, but I feel that my characters, even in spite of the fact that you may not relate to them in today's time and feel that they look a little different from their some other space and time, but they still are very lovable, I think. They're still of course, a very, there's an emotional reality. Absolutely. Yeah. 
and it's I think my style is my my texturing of my of my frame or the kind of textiling and all that I use and uh, the kind of um, art and colors that I use and all that comes along. I, I, it's, it's, for me, it's a film is is bringing together those five six art forms together. Whether it's music, whether it's classical, or it's it's modern, or it's Bollywood music, or it's architecture, or it is paintings, or it is uh, textiles. All this is coming together for me, or the dance forms. So it's just, it's bringing together all these art forms uh, in a way that I don't think other filmmakers do it because yeah. it's my my own understanding of a frame and within that frame all these art forms come together and through that I, I cannot ask a painter and say that well but this Mother Teresa that you've painted doesn't look like the real Mother Teresa but I get a sense of Mother Teresa being painted. It's what it evokes. Or, or the horse that you've painted doesn't look like a real horse, it doesn't have the dimensions or the dynamics of the, the, the structure is not, uh, the proportions are different but that's a painter's perspective of the horse and I have my own style of filmmaking and I think uh, a lot of people wait and like my filmmaking so they, they find something different in it uh, but I think it's primarily it is my way of interpreting real life in my own warped sense as I keep saying uh, I'm putting it on celluloid. You know um, when you did a few interviews around Padmavat you said that I'm dying to get back into the studio because my cinematic the cinematic part of my brain is peaking. Mm. So does that mean you find ins more inspiration? Does it mean you have more clarity as an artist? What does it mean when you say that cinematic part is peaking? I feel right now I need to talk less being one of the main reasons is that my work is now I express myself more effortlessly, easily and with more control through a visual, through a scene, through a, uh, a sequence or through a film. Uh, I don't find the need to talk in words. My communication for me to the world through words is redundant. So what I understand when I go to a, a studio, a floor, when I say studio, I'm talking about a floor, I get fascinated. It is my absolute temple. It's my place of worship. Any, whenever I enter an empty floor, I, it's, it's goose bumps and goose flesh for me. Because really? From there, even now? Even now. Even from there, the whole joy of suffering for this one year for not being able to start a film because I wanted to calm down and get my energies right. I have suffered in some ways to be waiting and dying to go to the So I'm writing relentlessly every day, this, 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 just so that I can go to the floor and then transform it into my own world and say, okay, fine, there was nothing, it's bare walls, it's a catwalk. Uh, I think I've always kept saying that my gods live on the catwalk. Right. I don't need to look any further into the heavens and say, God help me. I feel very inspired. I don't know if I've told you this, but I was as a four-year-old child, I was taken to a, a shooting by my father. Who yeah, you to told visit. me, yes. And I, I was fascinated by the world he put me in a cabaret being shot. And I knew this was my world. And his words were very clear, don't move from here, don't go away from here. And I still feel the essence and the power of those four words because I just want to keep going to that world. That is, that is my world. It's, my world is not my office, it's not the roads, it's not a holiday, it's not it's, it's, it's those four dark walls. Hmm. And from there to imagine sounds, to imagine songs, to imagine art, transforming it into a world that you seem slightly uncomfortable with. But <laughs> All that we will discuss this after. <laughs> yeah, but I feel that I am enjoying now filmmaking far more effortlessly than I did 10 years ago. The strain feel, is less. No, in terms of how to construct a shot, how to improvise. It comes easier. It comes easier. Now I feel I'm, I can go in and I can start doing what all that was in my mind. There was right. a time when my mind could not, what my mind told me, I could not convert it for my lack of ability to communicate with so many people. You have to talk to so many people and convey it and finally execute it. Yeah. Uh, I talk more effortlessly on, this, on the floor now and I get what I want. It's been happening since Ram Leela and uh, far more in control of the form. So I just want to keep living. That's my life. I don't live any other life. I don't live any other thing. I don't go for dinners. I don't go for movies. I went for two movies in the last two years. So you don't watch? You're not interested? I don't, I don't go to the theater and watch. For me, this I'm consumed by the thought of just the film that I want to make. Even now, if I uh, want to travel and go for a drive, I go up to Film City and come back. Because that joy of going to that road and all those Sunil Maidan, my Ram Lila set, my Baji Rao set, and nostalgia is an important part of wanting to say, to inspire me. Yeah. So I live in my own, a lot of people find it a little difficult and say, but you don't go out, you don't. 
I am enjoying the world in this, this, this space that I'm living in. And you savor your own company? Completely, because you're constantly thinking. You're constantly living in some other world. I cannot connect it to people around me and say, because when they're talking also, I'm like, yeah, uh, are you done? I mean, uh, because my mind is saying, I want to, ah, something has come to my mind. Uh, it's not normal or healthy for a lot of people because it feels that, you know, you are overdoing it and you need to be a little more relaxed. But I enjoy every minute of pursuing it to the point of madness, pursuing it to the point of almost punishing myself pursuing to the point of saying that no sense of guilt that I give it all. Whatever I do, I give it all as far as the filmmaking is concerned. And then outside the filmmaking, I give it nothing. So it's, that is the way I am. But Sanjay, that doesn't mean that you're not interested in people because of course I'm interested in people. You have I to like be, people. right? I love people. I'm very, I connect. Once I meet people, mm. uh, I'm just always worried about how will this person react? Will he say this? I have my own screenplays because you're a, uh, constantly right. writing screenplays. So you start writing screenplays so you about people. have a people. whole fiction in your head. Then when I'll enter, this person will come in and it may not respond the way I would want him to respond and that huh. will put me off, etc, etc. So before I go in, there is a whole screenplay in my mind of which is completely fictitious nonsense. It is not necessary. But once I meet people, then I'm charmed by them and I'm charming enough to charm them and right. we all have a great time. And I'm very accessible in that sense. You can tell me anything. I'm a great listener. I, I will listen to your criticism. I have listened no, to it over have. years. Yeah. And I've appreciated you for yeah. speaking. Leaving the friendship aside, you've, spoke, you've Absolutely. said what you wanted yeah. to say. For the five minutes, I'll say, no, Anupama has gone mad. When I'm reading it, but I say, but she has a right to say what she wants no, to you've say. Been and I amazing. appreciate that. So I'm a good listener. I'm a good, uh, if not a good talker, I'm a good listener, and mm. uh, so I enjoy people a lot, of course. But, but then again, I get consumed by what I want to do. I want to listen to music in my car, and then go into some other world and appreciate all the nuances of the great singers that I've not yet finally found, or watch a great painting and sit and watch, or maybe an old classic, a film or something that you discover and rediscover and rediscover. Yeah. So it's, life is beautiful in that sense. It's just cinema all the time in my mind, though uh, the number of films that I make are very less, mm -hmm. considering the kind of amount of being consumed by the idea of being part of a film is there. But I, I, but I guess that still the product is um, those two years that I invest in finally then shows on the screen, at least for myself. A lot of people don't agree with my kind of films, but I found a large audience that comes in, even on the road when I'm traveling or I'm in my, I walk to get my cigarette or I'm traveling with my window down and smoking. People are just constantly saying, wonderful, mm -hmm. we like it. And I say, but dude, how do they know me? I don't hardly, I hardly come on television. I hardly come anywhere. But that connect for the work is yeah. so immense that I feel it's worth, uh, Assuming. Staying in that meditative state and right. realizing that it really pays off. It's a state where I'm consumed. So now when you ask me a question, it becomes difficult for me to snap out of something and say, yeah, no, let me concentrate because I have to be true to this moment and say, yeah, let me Correct. talk about what you have to say. But Correct. I'm, I've started living, I think, for a lot of people in La La Land. So in it's alternate <laughs> reality. <laughs> yeah. You know, Sanjay, I watched Padmavat again to, for this interview and I was again just struck by how beautiful the film is. You know, just the beauty that you've designed in each frame. It's perfect down to sort of how much her chunni will slip or, uh, you know, one, one tendril of hair will come like this. I mean, it's just gorgeous. And they're all three of them are just stunning. And where does this hunger for beauty come from? From the lack of beauty that didn't exist in my growing years, in my formative years, we lived in a very poor house. We had no paint on the on the walls. Mom was a wonderful dancer, so she would dance in that small hundred by hundred. And when the radio would have a song that she liked, we didn't have good clothes to wear. We were always born. So there was a lot of things that I felt deprived as a child, and my mind was always of a filmmaker's mind. So whenever I would sit and do homework with mom teaching me what I had to do as a child, I would be looking at, wondering what color should the wall be. Uh, no, it should be this, it should be that. So my mind was preoccupied with finding beauty in that lack of beauty in my life or lack of space. Therefore, my sets are very humongous because of the lack of space. Right. We were all crammed into almost breathing in onto each other. So all these things are 
um, a search that keeps finding um, within yourself. You keep finding it all the time as you grow. And today, I have the luxury to find it to the bestest of my ability and the possibility because now I can arrange the kind of funds to make the film I want to and therefore I can do what I want to. But being deprived of, of something, I feel deprivation is a very important part for any artist, pure artist true artist to find expression. It's only when you crave for it and only when you call for it from deep inside your soul and you say, find that one little line that Lata Bai sang in that one song. It's etched in your soul. And you realize, where did her music come from? Deprivation, it, was, it came from a lot of angst. It came from a lot of, which singers today don't go through it. I want to find beauty, beauty not in the sense of plastic beauty and snow-capped mountains and, sure. and daffodils and flowers. And right. That's not beauty for right. me. To find beauty in, in the little thread that comes out of a, of a shawl that some weaver has woven and to put it on the artist and let that thread be. Mm. It's gone to that minutest of level which I've started enjoying immensely. One little Santur piece which would come in a song as a backup somewhere in the orchestration, I would want to use it when I'm shooting the song. It's hours and hours and hours and hours and hours and hours of work of working with the costume designer, with the art director, painting and repainting and to be able to block it and to be able to get the character right and then forget about all that and concentrate on the narrative and concentrate on the scene and concentrate on... It's a lot of effort. I give it I, like, I keep saying, I give it all. Mm. Once I'm there, then I'm no, I'm not there for even myself. I sometimes wear torn pajamas and go to my assistant says, but uh, uh, sir, you, your pajama is torn. <laughs> I said, bunk it, let, let, let it be. Let's just consider on the work. My buttons are not there. It does nothing matters. What matters is how do I create that one moment of beauty within which I also tell my story and it tells something about the character also. How those characters feel Half the time my job is done with the actors because they wear a certain outfit right. or they're made in a certain way and put in a certain ambience and given a few lines. And they immediately respond to the color, the, the, the weave, the texture, the background music I play on the set to, for them to emote. Hmm. All that works in terms of, it's just not pursuing beauty. Hmm. For me, it's a frame. It's, it's a, a texture. Thing. It's, it's something that I'm constantly pursuing to. Frame is sacrosanct. Yeah. A lot of filmmakers, I, I mean, it's great if you see a lot of, um, uh, slice of life films that are being made and they run into the lanes with handheld cameras. That's also right. beautiful. Right. That's also, uh, but the frame has to be correct. So I'm constantly pursuing that. I feel very guilty if I feel a shot is not right. I come back and reshoot, I redo it. Yeah. I can't live with something that is not done to the, to, the, to the bestest of my ability. If somebody else can do it better, I'm sure. But I need to pursue it. But I, you've always, Sanjay, had this eye for beauty? Was, did always. you cultivate it or no, was it no, just there? No, it was there. It was there. It was constantly being told to watch V. Shantaram's work and Raj Kapoor's work and Satyajit Ray's work. My father was a film hmm. producer in his own way. He didn't fulfill his dreams. So yeah. all his unfulfilled dreams became my angst and therefore I kept going back to what was he saying? What was he trying to pursue? What are these filmmakers he's talking about? What is he constantly playing the Lada Mangeshkar song for me and Bade Gulam Ali Khan and Pandit Amir Khan Saab and, and Gangu Bhai Hangal and at the same time playing Dada Kondke for me and saying that is also important. So I, but I think that comes naturally. You cannot cultivate and you cannot say um, uh, Gai Tunde Saab, Aap Aise Paint Karo. No. Yeah, it is, it's just a natural uh, Hussain Saab, Aap Aise Paint Karo. It's in your DNA. It's, it's there. You're born yeah. with it. Yeah. You're born with it. Then you are born to a place which is deprived of all beauty. Mm. Then you pursue it, find it and you find your mission and you find your expression and you find. So it's a whole process of from the time you're born and where you choose to be born as an artist, your soul, it could be uh, people say I'm 300 years old and as a soul is <laughs> so maybe all the things that of the of the past that, that sub, subconsciously remain in your mind and you have experienced it and you want to of course these are abstract thoughts people yeah. might think I've, I'm really losing it but these are facts these are yeah. facts of life sometimes uh, people see a piece of uh, a song and they say we get goose flesh yeah what is it that creates the goose flesh? It just cannot happen out of, it comes out of so many years of accumulative ability to say, okay, finally that moment culminates into that frame right. or that moment or a song that I shot. Mm. But it comes from many, many years of living it, uh, craving for it, uh, knowing it, mm. uh, somewhere in the subconscious it has stayed. So it's it's a very uh, complex uh, thing, but it's a, it's a great, uh, 
way of finding your expression and being there. Hmm. Sanjay, you just said the frame is sacrosanct. That's something that you really live by. Yeah. Um, you also said, I remember in some interview, that, that you don't want to be, when you are on your deathbed and you're watching your films, you don't want to see a mistake yeah. in a frame and have to live with that. I've decided right? no, there are two films which I will not see in my life which <laughs> when I'm going. <laughs> those two films don't bring them in front of me. Because there are mistakes, yeah. <laughs> Which ones are they? That, only that, <laughs> that, that <laughs> secret goes with me when I'm gone. <laughs> no, but tell me, ki when, when you're constructing down to the last detail, does it leave enough room for spontaneity or imperfection that actually lets it breathe a little? Everything is spontaneous. All my homework that I do as a filmmaker of, of knowing a scene and understanding, everything is changed on the set. We take time Meaning to, you have one idea and then, and then you then get I, there and I you go, change I, it all. We've rehearsed it one night with the actors. I come in the morning and I change everything. So the actors, Ranveer, Deepika, Priyanka, they after a point stopped rehearsing the scenes previous night. Says, one second. So you're going to change everything in the morning. Mm -hmm. You're starting rehearsing right now from us coming from here. Tomorrow we're going to come from there. Right. You're going to say, make us say all the different things that are not in the So let's not rehearse and let's not waste that time. Huh. You tell us tomorrow what you feel. I improvising and spontaneously reacting to the space is what makes those scenes very, very uh, a deep impression on people when they watch it. And there is a power that generates from it because it is not studied. Mm. That perfection which you find and to match, to mix it with spontaneity, those are that's the whole challenge which I've overcome over the years, and I've found my way to be spontaneous through finding perfection. So once I've improvised and wanted to play, then I sit and change the color or change the costume and do all those sorts of things. By the time I take my first shot, the actors have a nice nap, they come back. <laughs> so it's it's constantly writing with the camera on the set. Right. Living that moment, not on the paper in my office, but going there and once the actors come, then how do I feel that, that they should talk? Hmm. I was shooting this bathtub song in Madhmavati, Binte Dil, which uh, Jim Saab and Ranveer are in the bathtub right. and I didn't know what to do. I went over there and I said, Jim Morrison and Zina Tama, mix the two and in no. the tub, in the tub. That was your brief? Yeah. So he said, Jim Morrison and Zina, Zina Tama. So he says, give me one hour. I need two. First, debrief myself. I don't understand what the hell are you talking about? Huh. And when he came and I said, no, I'm, I don't want to see a rehearsal. We'll go for a take straight away. He didn't know what hit him. Right. And and when he performed, I was so moved by what he did. Because that is how an actor is improvising. I'm improvising. We had no brief. We didn't know what to do. And it's constantly discovering the moment on the set. But did you think of Jim Morrison the night before? No, no. that came to you right then. As I drive. Oh, as and I keep can. listening. Then I, suddenly I change something. Then suddenly I'll say, let's do this. Then I suddenly I'll say, let's do that. So it's constantly um, living that moment. If once the space comes arrive, mm. once the characters come there, once you know everything is in place, then you respond very differently from what you've planned. Uh, even after the rehearsal in the morning, after we've changed everything, I still change when they come back. So they come in the first thing, this is, Hope there are no changes because we've rotted it in our mind. And then, but and then you say no, yeah, there is yet another. Yes, yes, can we do it tomorrow? And I am graceful enough to understand that it derails them. Yeah. Okay, we won't do it today. We'll do it tomorrow mm. because that moment is very precious. So if it means a little bit extra money, it doesn't matter. Extra time, it doesn't matter. Let's live it and and, and live it honestly. Mm. That honesty within finding spontaneity and perfection is very expensive, it's very uh, time consuming. I took 260 days to shoot Padmavati because that's how uh, I make my film. And the producers? They don't ask questions. And uh, That's a great I, privileged position to and be. I won't answer if they ask me any questions. So that's how it is. Do you let them come on set? Yes, sometimes they do come on the set. Uh, I'm not very comfortable, but I'm not uncomfortable either. It's mm. their money, it's their putting in, it's, it's their privilege. And they're very kind to me. They've been very cooperative with me. Uh, Viacom was very wonderful through the making of Padmava, through all the problems we went through, to stand by and to pursue it and not give up and say, let's shut it. Mm. Uh, wonderful people. Ajit had a great vision to be able to put so much money on a film that on the paper seemed like it may never recover. Yeah. 
So when you believe in something and you believe in a director, I mean, what more respect can I ask for from a from a studio head who believes and says, okay, I'm with you. Mm. Let's just go and do what you want to do. Mm. I am blessed. So I feel that all that I was deprived of as a child in terms of not being able to get a paintbrush on the wall, um, God has blessed me with all that I can, as much paint as I want to. <laughs> so it's a lot of hard work and prayers and wanting to, uh, uh, Somewhere that energy also questions your your passion and your your belief in what you want to do, and then it gives it to you with with everything that Chappar you know. Part. <laughs> you know, Ranveer told me that of all the three films he's done with you, um, Padmavat was the most enjoyable. He said I became Kilji, and my mirror was Mr. Vansali. We were both Kilji. So I want to ask you, Sanjay, how much of these characters come from you, and how much of the residue do they leave behind? Oh, completely. I dived into the, the, the evil side of me and uh, the dark side of me and really? all the demons in me. I exercised them completely. I said, do this, do this. I was, I was tripping making, doing, doing Khilji. Every time Ranveer would walk in and I'd say, come here, come here, come here, sit here. The, this scene, sir, I, I remember this. I said, no, really, forget it. Now you get onto the bed. Now you take the, the crown and push it, push on it onto her face. Huh. So I would start doing all these things. And he said, but sir, are you uh, all right? I said, no, no, do, <laughs> do it. I mean, then I said, you push her on the bed and the, all your hair onto her and like a snake move over her. Right. I said, sir, are you really a, a good human being or an evil human being? I said, I said, just do, I'm enjoying the dark side of it. I'm enjoying, it's a very, you're, a com you're not a complete person if you ex don't accept your dark side. Yeah. We all have a dark side and a good side and a joyous side and a bleak side. As a filmmaker, as I kept saying that all my bitterness, anger, jealousy, love, laughter, humor, everything has to be brought in as a filmmaker onto the platter to be able to see. If you're a very good filmmaker who speaks very good lines and is very well behaved and is always laughing at the right time, then you are not expressing yourself fully as a filmmaker. You must be hated. You must understand hate. You must understand love. Right. For all that to... Sabras. Ah, sare ras ko ab, ab samjho. Right. Fear hone chahiye aapke andar. Wo fear ko kaise aap express karoge? Kyunki aapke character ko ek fearsome situation hai aapke character right. ke liye. So if you've not experienced all this and you don't express it also when the time comes. With Khilji, I was having a blast. With Ram in Ramila, uh, I was with Leela also. I had a blast because huh. she was a little whacked out, and huh. she was. So I enjoy doing mad characters, which a lot of people feel I am a very serious person, and I talk very little, and I'm inaccessible, and I am enigmatic. I'm nothing of the sort. I am a very, very um, happy person. Yes, I'm quiet. I'm intense. Mm. Uh, I can slip into the dark side within a fraction of a second and you won't know who that person is. Mm. But when I'm enjoying life, I'm enjoying it to the fullest through my characters, not through my own personal living. Mm. Through I save it all to live it through my characters, through my film that I want to do. So there are riots in, in Ram Leela that I've shot and there are action sequences and gun in the hand and all right. that you want to imagine. I would never do it in my real life. I save it as a filmmaker to express it with my full power onto the screen, onto the, I save it for it. Hmm. Um, but in life, Sanjay, you don't want to actually my, yourself live some of this? Of course I'm living. I mean, I'm living the life I've chosen. I'm right. enjoying everything. I've always waited to do this. Hmm. At that age of four, I decided that that little cabaret that I was seeing being shot as a four-year child in the studio, I knew I wanted to do shoot that all my life. I wanted to keep... Uh, wo apple forbidden apple jo kha kha ke wo phek rahi thi wo cabaret artist wo to apple forbidden fruit kha liya tha maine us din so i want to live only this i am enjoying it and i want i just hope that i have more energy to do far more work because my mind is exploding with so many ideas and so many ways to do a thing i'm just ready to go to a floor and shoot three films at a time i feel right now you know one of my favorite moments in padmavat was when he puts the perfume on yeah, the girl yeah. and, and then that, rubs her against yeah, himself that was my subconscious <laughs> uh, it was on the set i said you know just splash it on her and huh. so he says yeah then i said now pull her and rub her on, on onto you and so that you get the fragrance and he huh. said so you mad <laughs> I said, just do it. It's going to be a moment of... Uh, it was amazing because it captured who he is so completely. Yes, but it also captures who I am completely.
it also captures the anger in me, the mm. arrogance in me. I'm letting it all out. I'm letting it all come out and expand. Uh, what do you call uh, katharsa? Ah, yeah. katharsa. Ah, so just, just purge, purge all the. Because you need to grow as a person, yeah. evolve as a human being. I've mm. changed a lot from what I was uh, ten years ago as a person, as the way I respond to situations, to uh, uh, to everything. Mm. I've become. Uh, far more nicer and I want, want to be another 10 years plan is to become even nicer really? and to become even better as a human being because I feel the more nicer and you keep purging um, there's a lot to purge so another 10 films I'll take to cleanse myself but but I think it's a it's a it's a process that you evolve as a filmmaker as a human being mm -hmm. um, enjoy life and enjoy the way I enjoy my life you enjoy life in your way yeah and uh, finally find God somewhere waiting for you there and say, well done. <laughs> when I say God, it could be, uh, it could be Raj Kapoor, uh, Shantaram and uh, the they'll be waiting. They're waiting there and saying, the you gates. did well, <laughs> you did well. And, That's such uh, a great visual. <laughs> that is such a great visual. Yeah. yeah, they'll all be, they'll pat you on the back. Mm. <laughs> Sometimes I feel they come in, um, they're hovering around. Really? You have to invoke energies. Mm. Uh, as a filmmaker, it's a, it's, a, it's a world of illusion you create. And if you don't connect to illusions in the right sense and find poetry within that illusion, yeah. even if you're telling a simple scene of two people arguing over a mundane, stupid, trivial thing, you still give it a certain dignity and you say, okay, fine. And I suddenly get up and say, so you do this. Yeah. And then I come back and sit and say, but that's very Raj Kapoorish. Where did that come from? Really? Then I, I'm then something wondering, and then I go back and sit in the edit and say, uh, this is like Mehboob Khan shot Nimmi, no? This is like, so I'm, of course, enamored by those people. Right. I, uh, Kiasif and Kamal Amroy and all these great filmmakers. We don't make films like that anymore. We are too much into um, edgy, raw, mm. and then they get great reviews. Yeah. Uh, you all say, oh, it's a great piece of work because it, it reflects life and society. All of Shantanamji's work or Bimal Roy's work didn't reflect life or society. Some of them did, yep, uh, yeah. a lot of them did. Yeah. But when they had the need to do Aan or Mother India was a great social statement also, mm. but mm. a great work of art. Yeah, absolutely. Um, when you come to uh, Navrang, which I love immensely, yeah. or Pinjarabi, uh, these are where he's tripping as a, as a, as a filmmaker. Correct. As a, so Correct. He has a right to. There are no we, boundaries. Yeah, I mean, right, we write off today these kind of films and say, oh, oh but that's a legacy. Mm. That is what our legacy is all about. The West went completely mad watching Padmavat because they said, ah, fine. Finally, we see the exotic, uh, old, lyrical India. We understood a part of the way they live, the way they had kind of that whole evolving of a nation from where it is to where sure. it was to. to. So mm. it's important to also talk about those things and everything doesn't have to be raw, edgy and real and touches a social chord and of an course. issue and solves an issue. Yeah, not They are all. very important films. I'm not, yeah. I'm not looking down upon No, but you need all kinds. Important. All kinds. But yeah. this kind is normally looked at with great skepticism now and saying, oh, he spent so much money. Oh, he spent so much time. Oh, look at the luxuries afforded. Oh, look at this. Oh, mm. look at that. Mm. Buy these, buy these uh, uh, to be looked into. Do you also look into the kind of trouble and the problem and the angst and the pain that I go through to make it? No. Yeah. So you look at this side of what I, I what I'm afforded, uh, God has allowed me to afford today, and you're right. not looking at the other side. Right. So I also uh, go through it, and so has Kamal Amroi gone to it, making ten years of Pakiza or ten years of Mughal Yeah. They're cult films. Yeah. We're still deriving from them. Absolutely. I'm still very jealous of Kiasif Saab and saying, when will I ever be able to make a film of that caliber? and that nuance and that lyricism of being completely connected to the Supreme. Yeah. Kamal Umroi was connected to another energy, another level of creative angels. Those creative angels, when they invoke, they stand by it for 10 years, 12 yeah. years, and nothing changes, nothing goes away. Yeah. Look at these great men. Yeah. Where are these great film, films being made? I'm, I feel I'm the only one left aside over here. Of course, there are 18 historicals being made, mm. and of course, but... Uh, this kind of uh, invoking uh, creative angels and they could be any soul that you know you could you deep down say uh, suddenly she looks like Vaidha Rehman walking in from Vakti Ne Kiya Kya Si Sitam why yeah. is it happening because somewhere I'm invoking those energies all the time praying to them talking to them yeah. looking at their work worshipping them so Bimal Roy se leke sab kuch yeah. so there's still so much to explore as a filmmaker for me yeah. so I better get down to making films fast rather than trying to get out of the trauma of of Padmavats. No, no, 
no, listen, that's done and, and it was a huge success. Yeah. But, but tell me, Sanjay, I want to understand how you work. You have a very long-standing relationship with uh, your writer, Prakash. Uh, what is the process? He's writing, sending it to you. Like, do you do it at a certain hour of the day or like mm. what? Very random. Very, huh. when the moment comes, it comes. It could come having coffee here. It could come having talking or, or, or the set, improvising suddenly. Uh, we meet, we talk, we discuss this, 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 this. I'll say Devdas. Hmm. I'll say, now look at Devdas and between the lines from where Sharachandra is written. Hmm. So I don't want those lines, but I think there is something in between we can discover that that idea of Paru and Chandramukhi meeting. Right. So he says blasphemy. I said, doesn't matter. But Mimal Roy, they crossed. They During, crossed in the, the train, right? In the, the, in the Palki. In the Palki, right. Palki. She's walking by. Right, right. Yeah. But that was not in the text. Right. That was not in the book. So if he's uh, improvised. You and take it done, further. I take it further. And yeah. with time, you explore it. Mm. Every filmmaker, and there are going to be 10 more Devdas is being made in the next 15 years. It's a story that will live in the minds of Indian filmmakers. They'll always want to tell that story. But we found and improvised and then suddenly he will write a scene and come and he writes random scenes. He'll start with writing scene number 48. No. And that's how 48th scene will come to me. And I say, it's fabulous. I'm moved. I'm um, I'm, I've gone mad reading that scene and huh. then suddenly scene number five will come. So it's like... Then how do you connect the dots? But I'm so used to it and huh. I also live with it. And one line is read and I'm also working. Then I send him five Do you ideas. write as well? Yeah. I, and I, not a the longhand dialogue, key no, computer? Not, not at the di dialogue. I, I, I can't type. You can't so type. I write with my huh. pencil or a pen huh. on the paper still. Huh. Or I have somebody sitting next to me and typing. And you're dictating. Yeah, I'm dictating. Huh. I can't message also. I, I take five minutes to message. Yeah, I'm coming. Down. Wait. Because I'm going Fully to type tech wrong, wrong word. The thing, wrong things happen. So it's like, huh. leave it. I don't answer messages and all that. Huh. I've noticed. But... <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I think then suddenly I'll send him two ideas. Kaisa Prakash, aise, aise huh. So it's a lot of give and take. And I really respect that man's writing. He's a genius. And Where is he mind. based? He's in Mumbai. 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 But so we, lived, we lived in the, in, in the old chawl, which I keep talking about, huh, where huh, I huh, lived huh. my childhood. Huh. He was five buildings away. Really? Living in, in a chawl over there. Huh. And we were also relatives because he's also a Bansali. But we have never met for the 28 years of my life that I lived over there, I'd never seen Prakash Bhai. Because huh. I would be in my home, I was a recluse, I was an intense, in, introvert child, so exactly was he. So he would be in his house, we met uh, for Devdas and he says, I lived over in Madhubhag. I said, but I lived there. Then we said, oh, you were in that <laughs> Can you imagine two That's people? Amazing. We didn't know, we'd not seen each other. We had never, never and, and what a writer, and what a huh. genius in his own right. I enjoyed working with Bhavani also. Who we right, wrote for Black. Black and Guzarish. Yeah. So it's just a, it's a back and forth. Yeah, it's those abstract ideas that he can put together. Then I take his writing and take it a level with notch it. And I'll say, okay, you wrote a great scene, but I'm going to shoot a better scene than that. So we have our own challenges amongst ourselves. And he says, dekha do, dekha do, dekha do, kya karte. So it was a constant trying to take each other into searching for excellence right. by challenging each other. Huh. So it's a, uh, but my filmmaking is very random. I never go to an outside location or a great place to write a screenplay. Hmm. I want it to be my office as, as chaotic as my office is always with 5,000 things and I'll say, ye saaf nahi kiya, ye theek nahi kiya, ye khana jaisa kiyo hai. All that is constantly going on. Yeah. Why haven't you come on time? So I'm occupied with all these Your things. Your housekeeping and writing. Uh -huh. And in office also, huh. also here also. You've huh. come on time five minutes late. Why are you five minutes late? Huh. So it's like I'm, I create chaos also around me huh. to be able to find that one thought says, ah, I solved it, I moved it all out, I found something. Now that chaos is irrelevant. Yeah. I was with Vinod Chopra for eight years. Yeah. Eight years of my life and I learned so much from him. I saw his eccentricities, he was full on. Yeah, yeah. And I took everything from him and then I realized, I said, I wish I had not stayed that long because I have picked <laughs> up... Nahi learn karni nahi learn karni thi. Thi. <laughs> So, uh, no, but Vikram Motwani, who assisted you, talks about what a great, you know, uh, education that was for him. Yeah. It's, uh, you have to express fully. Yeah. I think anything, a, a flower blossoms completely. But there are thorns that come with it also. Right. So you have to express yourself as, in, as a living entity in your fullest. Mm -hmm. Some things are acceptable, some things will hurt, some things will have fragrance, some things will, and then you'll perish at the end of it. So while it is blossoming and while it's growing, you must do it to your fullest. Bloom away. Bloom away. Otherwise, you are leaving so much unsaid within you and saying, no, no, propriety, good behavior. Mm -hmm. What will people say? What will people say? I sometimes when I've, I've 
evolved into a better human being, people still say things about me. So they are not going to stop saying things Correct. about me. They still call Kuch me. Kuch to They still call me arrogant. They still call me inaccessible. Nothing Haan. of the sort. I am a very simple person. My favorite city is film city. My favorite food is dal chawal. My favorite uh, pastime is watching uh, news, and that's it. <laughs> and I just live and make. Uh, do you know when I made Devdas? I I, I did. I had a small one bedroom house, and I used to live in the hall. I had no mom. Mom used to be in the bedroom. I used to live in the hall. Yari road. Yari road. Ah, I've and been. You've been there. I've been. There. And Rekha ji came one day after Devdas, and then she was a little surprised. Says, you live in this house? I said, yeah, but but but, but that vision over there in Devdas was so big. Right. It didn't strike me that I didn't have a bedroom. I didn't strike me. It didn't matter. Nothing mattered. It was only that in that we had music sittings and costume detail uh, uh, yeah. meetings and art meetings. Yeah. You, there was a humongous film at I that time. I remember that humongous. set was unbelievable. Now those things, but but the director doesn't have a, an own bedroom. He lives in when when you come from the night shift and you find the maid wipe jhadu uh, maraving in the morning like right next to your face and you find out thirty minutes that's her time and you live with all that. And therefore, I'm a very grounded, down to earth person who has arrogance of the fact that I live what I live. But Sanjay, tell. Tell me, how do you create music? You have no formal training, and I was trying to figure out who else. I think apart from Vishal Bharadwaj, you're the only other director, composer, with no formal training. How do you create something as magical as Lalish in, uh, in the bathroom? In the bathroom. Uh, no, nee, you're standing in the bathroom and Lalish comes to you. And I sing the song. Simple as that. You just sang Lalish. Yeah, I just sang Lalish. It was written, so huh. I lived with it, and I was having a bath one day. Suddenly, I start singing. So a song comes. A song doesn't have to come with. I took my instrument. I sat on a piano. I took my harmonium, and I took tanpura, and then we said, "Let us create a song." A song can never come like that. Yeah. I've listened to so much music. I don't live without music. If I'm writing, there's music. If I'm bathing, there's music. My music plays non-stop, twenty-four-seven in my house till I. Sleep and I switch off the light. It's non-stop. Okay. So I've heard so much music that for me to respond musically to a lyrical to a line, and I've made songs again as a child. As a, when you're a child and you're not too interactive with people, and you're sitting on a terrace alone of that uh, crowded uh, Bhuleshwar area, you're sitting over there, and then I would sing a song, My Escape. Hmm. Then I would I would take the lyrics of a, I used to go and buy film books. Huh. There used to be film uh, huh. uh, leaf booklet types. Booklet huh. Huh. I used to go and buy them for twenty five paisa or whatever it is. Huh. And I would remake that song. So chura liya hai tumne jo I went and bought yado ki baara. Then I made my own chura liya hai tumne jo. So I was a little off that as a child. I was a little demented. Huh. Um, my father and mother were sometimes worried when they heard me sing that chura liya. They said, "I think are you are you sane? Are you are you there? Or do we need to take you for some treatment? What?" So I would make my own songs. After Savariya, yeah. when I was rediscovering myself after that uh, box office whatever bonanza that I went through, mm. then I discovered. I said, "Let me look into all." Sorts of areas that I've still not tapped into myself. So I yeah. take a song and I sing it. I'll I'll sit in my uh, farmhouse al uh, alone on a on a swing, and I'll sing a song. And then I record it on my phone with yeah. great uh, difficulty. And so many of them I've lost. Very nice songs I've lost because I've pressed the wrong button or whatever, delete or whatever. And but do, they don't stay in your head. They stay if I sing it again and again and again. Huh. So then they stay. Then I come here and I have a music team. Then I come and say, "Now you are the song." Sometimes they add to it. Sometimes they correct it. We all. I think music, film, everything is everybody contributes to yeah. you. Your I cannot say I am the filmmaker and I do everything. My costume designer does so much, in of spite of my brief, but they add so much more. Do that brief and make it their own. So everybody together makes a film. It's not like writing a poem, or it's not like a person like making a painting where you sit alone in a room and paint or. Hmm. Uh, draw your architectural plan for a building that you're planning to make. So it's great collaborative. But it work. just comes. It just comes. If I don't let it simmer and and, and live long, it goes. So that I, I really sometimes heard about a lot of songs which I thought were very good, but have disappeared. Uh, I'm constantly singing and making songs. Uh, some of my music composer I'm very fond of, Jay Dev Ji and yeah. R D Burman and uh, all those greats. The greats, Lakshmi yeah, Kant, yeah. Lakshmikant Paralal. Great. Yeah. So I. That's I amazing. Keep doing music. What a gift. Yeah, it is. It's it's getting better and better for sure. Ghumar was so difficult to create. Binte Dil was so difficult. Yeah. Binte Dil where some Arabic song I've created out of nowhere. And now there are versions being made in the Middle East by singers and very big stars of Binte Dil. Right. I don't know if you've seen them. Right. So it's a great moment of pride for for me to realize that their biggest star is singing a version of Binte Dil. Amazing. Uh, which is I don't know, I don't know Sa and Ray and Gur and Ma huh. and Pa. It's just a spontaneous. 
expression. Amazing. Are we done? No, we're not done. Tell me, Sanjay, now with the benefit of a year's in, you know, this thing, we're away from Padmamat. Uh, uh, you have the benefit of hindsight. You know, when I watched it again, that last scene is so powerful and it's so beautiful. That sea of red and those women and those flames. Uh, do you, when you sit down to create that beauty, think at all about the messaging? I mean, now when you look back, do you think there was any merit Chittor, in the argument? Chittor bled that hmm. moment. That was a sea of red. Right. You're talking of a beautiful visual because it's shot beautifully, lit beautifully. Overnight, I made a well. Overnight, I mean, over the last, I said, suddenly this jaw cannot work if they don't go down the steps. Right. So over one month, while we were shooting on this side of the of the Sunil Maidan, they were making that jaw set. For me, it was the whole power of running into fire, right. which is against all human logic and possibility because you know human being can run into fire. And these women who had decided war and they said we are going to run into fire and you don't even get an iota to even a shadow to see. Correct. But do you see... Is it grues it's gruesome? No. Is it a glorification? Do you see any merit in that argument? Now when you of look Of course, back, that is the way it should have been. There was no other end to the women in, in, in Chittorgarh at that point of time. And there is no other alternative end to today if I want to tell the story again and say, oh, the women. No, no. At that point, everything was over. They had to win the war. They uh, The war was about surrendering. They didn't surrender. They ran into fire. It is not glorification of saying, oh, the women were helpless and, oh, the women didn't know what to do and so forth. They were pushed into fire and, oh, it's gruesome. No. Right. It is an act of war. It's an act of courage. Harakiri is a part of uh, times when women had to do it because the kings lost the battle. So you surrender and go through the humiliation of being completely put into the harem and then going through all that you have to go through or you die a death of dignity. So if a woman decides to die a death of dignity in, in, in an event of when she, all her possibilities of fighting. Mm. Mm. She fought, she mm. sent the, 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 correct, the, the correct. husband, went. the, the, the king went for the, yeah. for the war. Yeah. He lost when finally the, the siege is going to happen. There is no choice and what a brave act. Mm. Why did I want to make that film? The courage to be able to find the to find your power at that point of time, what what is right at that point of time. It may not be right today for a woman to run into fire because she, in, in the case of adversity of what she's facing. But you fight back. But after all, you fight back also. There could be a time when you realize that it's, there's no fight back. So either I give up or I I fought, but now I need to take this stand. So there's, mm. And there's no glorification, beautification of it. There were women in red. They wear red when they wear red. I've not designed to make it look beautiful. I didn't want to make it look gruesome and I saw them going into the fire because right. that would have been extremely gruesome to watch. It's mm. not possible. Mm. I would not have been able to see it. Yeah. But that is why I made this film to, the, to salute the power that these women generated when they went. Chittor bled and that red that flew, that, that, that was that flowed over there through the steps of it. It was a moment of, for me, the high point of my filmmaking where it was a, not a word said yeah. in the climax. It's, it's it was a stunning 15 sequence. minutes of just silence. It was just music and it was just people uh, finding their own of how to fight that moment and yeah. win it at any cost. Mm. And win she did. But do you think, Sanjay, at all about messaging when you're creating? No, not at all. No. What messaging? You know, what I'm happened? telling the story that happened. That the message was courage and find your strength. Uh, I'm not here to, I'm not a documentary filmmaker. I love watching documentaries. I understand their great revelation and understanding of human suffering and whatever the world is yeah. happening. But I, my cinema is not about um, social messages. It's about a work of art working on your mind to set you to think and saying, do we subject women to this? Mm. Should a woman go through this? Do women en masse, en masse is what is happening world over where women are being subjected to all kinds of torture of unheard of and inex unacceptable things. Yeah. That is what my work should provoke. It, when it makes you think of, was it right, was it wrong, that is an achievement for me. Right. And that work of art should make you think. It stimulates some energies in you, which does, a mm. good painting does. So any work of art that doesn't set your senses tingling mm. and therefore to make you think, yeah. that is also a purpose of art. Yeah. When Hussein paints, paints something, what social message does he give you? Mm. When Taj Mahal was made, what social message does it? So art, when a great poet talks of 
of personal angst, not of socially relevant poetry. But yeah. when he writes the poetry of romance, what social message does he give you? Does art necessarily have to be a social message? Lata Mangeshkar has then yeah. done no social service for that matter. Right. But for me, she's the most important human being in the industry because she gave us art of a level which is unheard of. Not We cannot even imagine yeah. that kind of excellence in person. So she's a the greatest, yeah. but she's an artist which has got no social relevance. Mm -hmm. So art is not, yes, there is filmmaking, there is poetry, there is every kind of thing that also questions and addresses. But pure art, when it sets your emotions, it makes you cry, it makes you smile, it makes you think, it makes you want to create it, you live it. These are also purpose of art. Yeah. And what next, Sanjay? I know you said there are three projects and you won't tell me anything about any of them. But how soon do you get back into a studio? This month. Really? Yeah. This month. I shall announce it this month. And wow. then get to the studio. So I'm raring to go. How exciting. Yes. Cannot wait to see what you do next. Yes, dear. Are you done? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. And I'll never really be done. I could, I, I could ask you questions for at least another half. Hour. I can talk to you for another two hours, <laughs> but I think they are done. <laughs> they are like, oh, yeah. get it over, and it's lunch time. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Please.